guys, this is Kaylin. Today I want to share with you how I built a small floating vanity for our home office slash guest bedroom bathroom. Last time I shared a double vanity build that is wall to wall and also comes with a makeup drawer in the middle. This time the vanity is smaller, so I have simplified the DIY process and also introduced a new drawer style that is simpler to build than the shaker. I've included the tools and materials for this build and also the step-by-step -step routine instructions. So check them out if you're interested in building this project. Sounds good, let's get started. So here's the design. It's 30 inch wide, 20 inch tall, and 20 inch deep, plus the thickness of the drawer front. I will add the drawer inside to make things more accessible, and on the top, I'll also add the table tray just for actual storage. I started by cutting all the pieces. I laid out all the pieces I needed for this vanity box, and they are a little larger than a 4x4 feet plywood. I'm using the 3 quarter inch high quality plywood, which means that they are solid and the surface is smooth. Because I'm planning to paint them later, I chose birch finish um, because the wood grain is not very obvious, which is perfect for painting. Then I use my table saw to rip all the pieces. To join the pieces together, I'm using pocket holes. I drilled three pocket holes on each side of the bottom piece and they will be completely hidden once installed, unless you are staring at them by laying on the floor. To conceal the unfinished plywood edge, I'm using wood veneer. This is a very cheap way to cover any plywood edges. I don't really use real wood for this purpose because they are less stable and they may warp over time. And it's a lot harder to buy any large sheet of wood without joining them together somehow. Plywood is by now the best way I've discovered for cabinet making and constructions. The wood veneers are generally slightly larger um, or taller than the plywood thickness, so you need to trim the excess. So um, in this case, I'm using the edge trimmer, which makes my life a whole lot easier. Just by squeezing the tool and then just passing them through the edges, it is able to shave off those bits very easily. And to finish it off, you can use a hard surface to burnish the edges or lightly sand it with a sandpaper like what I did. And now I'm joining the two sides and the bottom pieces together. I like to use those long bar clamps to hold everything tight. So in this case, I'm using the three feet bar clamps. Then I'll drive the pocket screws through those holes to connect them together. I did all that with the wood glue this time, but you can feel free to add glue as well. Now I'm going to add some braces on the front and back. I'm starting with a bag and have created two pocket holes on each side to connect it to the side pieces. And then I just did the same with the front pieces. So for the front, I added two horizontal pieces because I'm planning to have two drawers on the front that are um, gonna be installed in an overlay style, which means I'll need a board between them and behind them for these two drawers. At this point, I also fill in any visible seams on the front with wood putty and sand it smooth so that later when I paint them, it will look like one piece, which would look really nice. Now that the box is done, I'm moving on to making the drawer. For my double vanity video, I did a traditional construction with sliding one quarter inch plywood into the drawer box. This time, I'm doing something a little simpler. So first of all, I figured out how my drawer would piece together, and I found that creating a 2D diagram or sketch is the best way to figure out the measurement. And the plywood pieces I'm using for this drawer box construction are all half an inch thick. So the math is pretty straightforward from here. Once I have all the drawer pieces cut, except for the bottom piece, I place them together, making sure everything is square. And then I start to install them from the inside out. And this is because it's easier to do it this way so that my bread nailer has space to maneuver, something I learned over time. I applied wood glue and then just clamped them together. Then I just tap the bread nails into them to secure them. I use one and a quarter inch bread nails, and I would recommend using at least that length or up to one and a half inches. 
If your bread nail is too long, it runs the risk of sticking out from the side just because it's only half an inch. But if it's too short, then it doesn't go in enough to build a strong connection. Also, I'm making the drawer that is 5 inch high. Um, later, I actually noticed it appeared to be a bit high for the faucet plumbing. So check yours before determining the height. For example, for my other bathroom, because the faucets are wall mount, so they goes behind the wall and that wasn't a problem at all. Once I secured the entire parameter with brad nails, I clamped some straight squares just to making sure everything is at the right angle. This is important because the U-shape of the drawer. For the back, which is where the plumbing cutout is, I'm clamping a long piece of plywood just to making sure everything stays straight. If it's not straight, you may run the risk of the drawer not fitting well in the sliders, um, which could really be a pain. And then I just let them sit overnight for the glue to cure. And now it's time to create the bottom of the drawer. I put a half inch plywood below the box and then trace the shape onto it so that I can cut it and it will fit perfectly inside. I first cut the outside to size and then just use my jigsaw to cut the notch. Then I brought this bottom piece back in and just push it all the way through the box shape of the drawer and now I'm ready to secure them. Because the jigsaw is not super accurate, so if you have small holes, you could use some little trim pieces to fill the gap, which is what I did. And then I prop the whole thing up just to make it a little bit easier to drive the brad nails and then I just nail it through the entire parameter. For the notch part, which is where the plumbing cutout is, it's a bit harder, which is why I'm using the right angle drill tool just to drive two screws on each side. If you don't plan to store anything that's very heavy, it might be okay to just leave it out. Now let's move on to creating the drawer front for the drawer. I'm creating a skinny shaker style front. It's a lot easier to create this than the traditional shaker style, and it's also really on trend these days. Basically, I'm just adding the wood trim pieces on the parameter of the front. I'm using this piece that I found at my local hardware store and it's quite affordable. And then I cut them at a 45 degree angle so that they can form this frame to frame up the panel that are actually made of three quarter plywood and edge banded earlier. To cut the skinny shaker trim pieces, I found it to be easier to make a light cut on the top first without cutting it all the way through and then just do another cut, just slowly grinding it down. If you cut it in one go, it may fly out, which is not very safe. Once I cut all 8 pieces for my two fronts, I just place those trim pieces in place to do a final check before I attach them on. Then I applied wood glue on the back of them and then secured them with brad nails. Alternatively, you can also use clamps to hold them down and just wait for the glue to dry, but this will take a lot of clamps. Once the glue is dried and cured overnight, I'm using the wood putty to fill any visible gaps, especially in the miter corner and the nail holes. Because there is a tiny seam between the trim pieces and the drawer front panel, I run a bit of caulk just to seal the gap. And now I'm ready to paint. I first use a brush to brush over the corners and then I use a roller to apply the primer. After the primer has dried, I gave it a light sand and then applied two coats of cabinet grade paint. I chose this blue color to match the wallpaper of the room and the color is called Benjamin Moore Spellbound. At this point, I'm also painting the vanity frame, including those small ledges that can be seen by opening the drawer.
Now I'm ready to install the two front pieces to the cabinet. First, I position them in place. I found the poker cards are a great tool to create the perfect spacing. And then I just trace the frame opening to the back of those front pieces so that I know where to place them afterwards. Another reason for that is that I'm using the tip out tray template and I need to mark where the overlap is so that I can position the template on the right place. I started installing the tip out tray first. I'm using a template that comes with it and marking all the holes where the screw will go and start to drill pilot holes. Then I used the smaller template it came with to mark the screw holes for the front piece. And I installed the hardware to the front panel. Then I just brought the whole thing to the frame and just installed them with the pilot holes I have created previously. With the template, it was actually quite easy to install, especially when you have access from the top. Okay, moving on to the drawer. I'm using the side mount this time. So basically, I just follow the instructions. I mark the reference line on it, and then insert the drawer member onto the drawer box. Then I just insert the cabinet member to the vanity frame. Because it has to be at least 1 8 inch high from the bottom, so I'm just using this like handy quarter inch trim piece so I can prop it up while I start to drill the pilot holes. Then I just use a power drill to drive all the screws in. I applied three screws on each side. And I use a hand screwdriver to do a little bit of fine tuning, which gave me more control on how tight I want it to be because sometimes with the power drill, I can overdrive things. And now all I need to do is just to push the drawer inside the vanity box and see if it works. I was able to slide in and out pretty well. To install the drawer front, I placed back the same amount of poker cards to prop it up so that it's in the right location and also I can match the markings on the back. Then I drilled the pilot holes from the back just to making sure to not drill too deep because it can really come out from the front if it's too deep. And then I just drive screws to the front piece. I recommend doing at least 4 screws to the front if your cabinet is as wide as mine which is 30 inch. This small floating vanity is now installed in the bathroom of our guest and home office space. And I love how much storage I'm able to add with this small vanity. This space is actually quite tricky. We have a concrete foundation that is sticking out 6 inches above the ground. So by making this vanity floating, we're able to still install the vanity and make everything work without hitting the foundation. I also like showing the floor a bit more just to make the space feel more more open. Thanks for watching. This is really one of the easiest ways to build a bathroom vanity that can fit your space and needs. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. I'll see you next time. Bye.